Hello again, everybody. Welcome into Gamecock Central Radio. Emerson Phillips joined by Gamecock Central columnist Scott Davis. All of our writers here at Gamecock Central do their best to be objective and report the news as it happens with Gamecock Sports. But Scott gives us a little bit different perspective each week. He gives us a fan's perspective. And, Scott, welcome into the show. It's a tough week to be a Gamecock fan, isn't it? Yeah, I don't think there's any any doubt about it, Emerson. And, and I'm pretty sure if you read my column this week, it was pretty obvious I'm a fan of this program. And I was hurting <laughs> on Saturday afternoon when I tried to put my thoughts together. But, uh, yeah, I, in my opinion, I, I said this in the column, I, I think this is the worst uh, South Carolina football loss of my lifetime. I know that sounds shocking to some people who believe losing to Navy in 1984, Furman in the early 80s, or the Citadel 25 years ago were as bad, if not worse, losses than this one uh, was. But uh, considering where this South Carolina program had risen to, and the resources they now have as part of the Southeastern Conference in terms of television money, facilities, talent they've accumulated over the last few years, uh, that was just an inexcusable performance. There's no other way to say it. Mm. Scott, uh, you're venting this week in your column. The title of this week's column is Time to Light a Match, and it is complete with some salty language. It was good stuff. (laughs) I empathized with a lot of what you have in the column this week, and you're saying it's time to burn it to the ground and rebuild. It is, and let me let me say this to anybody who's listening who's a South Carolina fan. I don't enjoy um, talking about folks losing their jobs or or having to to get the resume ready again or, or anything like that. That's that's not something that I revel in doing or enjoy doing. I I didn't start writing about this team to take pot shots at folks and. And I'm not going to start doing it now, but <laughs> there's just no other way to say it. This is a, a program that needs a complete rebuild. It needs to start from ground zero, essentially, and try to make this thing over. And to be honest with you, Emerson, when Steve Spurrier was putting together three 11 win seasons in a row, I just did not imagine that things were going to end up here. I I could certainly see uh, that perhaps his tenure might not end on a peak or a high note, but I I really didn't think we'd be talking about a team that's going to finish with three wins and and was essentially embarrassed by the Citadel on its home field on Saturday. Unfortunately, that's just where we are. That is where we are. It's hard to fathom, Scott, and you touched on this in your column this week. The the Gamecocks finished – ranked number four in the nation two years ago. Yeah. And it's hard to fathom how the Gamecocks have fallen so far so fast. It it really is. uh, You're (laughs) talking about a team that had just finished out beating a traditional Big Ten power in a New Year's Day bowl game for the third year in a row. They were one of the top five teams in the nation. If the playoff had existed at the time, they may have been in it. And, uh... All of a sudden, here we are, and Steve Spurrier at 2-4 and four, um, decides to call it a day, and the Gamecocks just haven't been able to get anything going. You know, I talked a little bit about how, and have talked the, the, the latter part of this season, about how pleased I was that the Gamecocks were at least showing some energy and enthusiasm in life, and the last couple of weeks, it just hasn't been there, so... This is a group that has decided to take a knee on the 2015 season, and uh, unfortunately we have our arch rival, our in-state arch rival, coming up this week uh, to williams Bryce Stadium, who will be entering this football game ranked number one in America. So it's an exciting time to be a South Carolina Gamecock fan, for sure. All right, Gamecock Central Radio here, Emerson Phillips, venting a little bit today with our columnist, Scott Davis. Scott, let's talk about the Clemson game a little bit now. You know, it certainly seems that morale is at the lowest it's been since the Gamecocks joined the SEC, and uh, maybe the low point of all time just in terms of the the morale of the fan base. And 
compounding this loss to Citadel is the fact that the arch rival Clemson Tigers, which you just mentioned, uh, are ranked number one in the country, and they are rolling into Williams Bryce on Saturday. And you got to believe the Tigers are are licking their chops at a chance to kick the Gamecocks while they're down. There's no doubt about it. I, I'm concerned that Williams Bryce Stadium is going to be Death Valley South this Saturday. I really am. I think Gamecock fans are probably going to be fleeing from this game in any way they possibly can, selling their tickets. I think there's going to be a ton of orange in that stadium on Saturday. I think it's going to be tough to watch if you're a South Carolina fan to see that, not just the fact that we're almost certainly going to lose this game, but that our own stadium is going to look uh, orange and white and purple for the most part. Um, I think when you talk about morale, and the reason why I believe this this may be the lowest point we've seen this program, even though there have been a stunning number of low points throughout its history, is that, again, the heights that they had attained just just months ago, honestly, and the fact that we all had sort of convinced ourselves that we were done with this kind of stuff and we weren't going to have to endure losses to the Citadel and, and, and get – uh, rolled up by Kentucky two years in a row and, and things like that. And, and again, compounding the, all of that is the fact that all of a sudden, Clemson is now one of the best teams in America. There's nothing any of us can do about it. They are, and uh, we just have to deal with it. So I think it's going to be a tough day Saturday. You know, you and I have talked a couple of times this season about the fact that I thought the Gamecocks potentially presented uh, the best opportunity for Clemson, excuse me, to stumble this season. And uh, it's not going to happen, I, I'm afraid. I, I think this is going to be a long Saturday coming up and uh, perhaps a long off season, but we know change is on the way. And we'll just have to see what happens. Gamecock Central Radio with Emerson Phillips and Scott Davis here venting after this frustrating, to say the least, uh, Gamecock loss to the Citadel. You can get breaking Gamecock news alerts delivered to your email inbox. Text USC to 42828. Text USC to 42828. Or just go to the Gamecock Central homepage for more information. Scott, uh, what's more likely to happen? The Gamecocks show up and actually put up a fight on Saturday, or Clemson runs up to score? You know, I, I may be the world's biggest idiot, and I think I've proven that's probably already true in my many of my columns this season, but... I just have to believe that South Carolina is at least going to come out on Saturday and make a run for a half or so in this ball game. It, I would be surprised if we saw a 63 to 17 type scenario like we did in 2003 when Tommy Bowden's Tigers dominated Lou Holtz's Gamecocks and just made them look absolutely amateur out there at williams Bryce Stadium. I, I do think Clemson is a, a, a far more talented team, but uh, I just I still believe for some reason that there's enough pride, enough heart, enough something to get this team going on Saturday, and I think they'll try to come out there and make a show of it for at least a quarter or two, and, and they'll – uh, almost certainly succumb eventually to Clemson and perhaps lose by double digits or or even worse. But um, I think they'll I think they'll make a run for a while and hang around and and I hope they at least can do that. We've got new smartphone apps that are available now so that you can listen to Gamecock Central Radio on your phone. We have the iPhone app, we have the Android app, and we're also on iTunes. Just search Gamecock Central Radio for all three. Scott, what are your plans for the game this weekend? Well, I am in Greenville, South Carolina, Emerson, which, as you know, is a, a, an enormously exciting place for a South Carolina fan to be spending the week uh, right now. I've seen more orange flags flying in the last day or two than I think I've seen in my entire life combined, and I grew up in this city. Um, but <laughs> I am uh, spending Thanksgiving with family and friends this week here in South Carolina. So what we're going to do at the, at least as of right now is try to get up really early Saturday and 
get back to the city of Atlanta where no one cares about South Carolina and Clemson and watch this football game at noon. And by the way, I mentioned in the column, we we simply don't play any games anymore other than at noon. That's just where we are right now. <laughs> so even with the number one team in the nation coming in, we're still getting ready to roll this thing out at noon. So I guess I'll grab a... I guess I'll grab a Hardy's biscuit and uh, head out of town, <laughs> get back to Atlanta, and watch whatever it is that's going to unfold in williams Rock Stadium on Saturday. Well, as painful a week as it's been, Scott, uh, in the aftermath of the loss to the Citadel, I really did enjoy reading your column. I could relate to a lot of what you talked about in this week's column on Gamecock Central. So happy Thanksgiving to you and your family, and we'll talk to you again next week. Thanks a lot, Emerson. Hope you have a great holiday, and we'll talk to you and see what happens next week. All right. Scott Davis, my partner here on Gamecock Central Radio, and I'm Emerson Phillips. Thanks for joining us. Happy Thanksgiving to you and yours.